Hey guys, welcome back to another Mythic Legions review. We have Brother Mandibulus up for review today. On the side of the package, we can see a short paragraph on the lore of Brother Mandibulus, along with a small photo of him. On the back, we have some new art for the 2.0 release, along with a few short paragraphs on the lore of Mythic Legions. Let's get them out. All Mythic Legions come in easy to take apart, collector friendly packaging. It's easy to remove or put back together. Brother Mandibulus is one of the last three remaining children of Necronominus. His sister, Morgoleth, leads the faction while his brother Melius focuses on his father's teachings and deals with any threats to the conjugation. Brother Mandibulus is the more aggressive of the three. He's usually dispatched on his sister's behalf to completely slaughter all who oppose his family and the disciples of Necronominus. Let's look at some details. Brother Mandibulus has a lot going on on his helmet. We noticed a face guard covering his eyes and his open jaw, you can almost hear his screaming. The bone has a sickly yellowish color to it. A lot of scrapes and scratches on the armor and the missing horn really shows how battle damaged the armor is. On the side of the helm, we can see the chainmail sculpted under his helmet. We have more dents and stains in the helmet with black paint highlighting the damage. We have orcish neck style armor, multiple spikes protect the front of the head and we can notice a lot of dark paint starting to wear out. On the chest we can see a red and black tabard, with the symbol of the conjugation of Necronominus in the center splitting the colors. The tabard is sculpted to be wavy and cloth-like. We can see the red and black continue on the back. The paint is a bit fuzzy here, but we will be covering most of this area up with shoulder armor later. The right shoulder is armored with plates of dark black steel. A lot of the edges are worn out, giving us a lighter shade where we would see the most used areas. The left shoulder has an unarmored skeletal arm. We have a small section of armor to protect the shoulder and we can notice more of that sickly yellow bone color. The hands are very worn out. We have the blackened steel here with big patches of grime and dirt all over the gauntlets. We can see tiny slashes and dents all over the spikes of the armor. On the front we can see the red and black tabard continues but the colors have been swapped. The sculpting takes form of a wavy cloth material and has brown stains all over the sides. On the side we can see heavy, thick layers of plated armor. Golden rivets lock the armor together with the steel clip that attaches it to the belt. The thighs have minimal sculpting here with more worn out black paint. The legs are beat up with holes, dents and scratches all over the armor. Tons of scrapes fades the black paint away and we can see brown dirt caking up on the edges of the armor. And lastly, we have the armored boots. More layers of spiked armor are covered in brown dirt, with scratches and holes all over the worn out armor. Let's look at the articulation. We have a ball jointed head, with a visor that moves up and down. It's possible to get it to go higher, but you'll have to loosen up the visor a bit. We have an articulated jaw that opens and closes, a shoulder that rotates and opens, elbow that bends and rotates, a rotating forearm, wrists that bend up and down and rotate, ball jointed waist, we notice we have no chest articulation like in the new 2.0 figures, legs that open and bend forward and back, thighs that rotate, a bend at the knee with rotation, feet that bend forward and back and rotate at the ankle. Let's see what accessories we get. We get an alternate head in the same sickly color as the rest of the bones. To install the alternate head, you pop off the original head and pop in the new head into the socket. The face guard on this figure can be removed by popping out one of the two pegs on the side, giving the figure a completely new look. We get a pair of spiked shoulder armor in matching worn out black paint. The shoulders have a peg that you socket into the back. They have slight rotation for better shoulder articulation. We get a mace with a wooden shaft and dark gray top. The top is removable and you could fit a different mace head in if you had an extra one. We get a nicely detailed orcish sword with a bone colored hilt. We get a large bardiche wrapped in a dirty rope for extra grip. The blade has tons of scratches and chips at the edges. 
we get a pair of skirts, one red and one black. They are torn up and have stains and dirt all over them. To install the skirt, you pop off the torso. Don't be afraid, it's a bit hard, but they do come off. Afterwards, you can use the slots in the fabric to place them through the ball joint. When you have the cloth the way you want it, just pop the figure back into the ball joint. The cloth adds tons of uniqueness to this figure and looks really good on him. Hopefully, we will see more cloth used in unique ways in the future. We get large versions of the wing adapters that fit 1.0 bodies. If you had wings, you would use these to attach them to the figure. And to finish up the accessories, we have a standard 1.0 belt. Brother Mandibulus is my first look into a 1.0 figure in the new advent of Decay Wave. After all this time, Four Horsemen are somehow still bringing out unique looking figures using the same old parts we've all been used to. The amazing paint job and brand new head sculpt really make this a unique figure, and the red and black colors really make this figure pop. The new head sculpt is insane with detail and articulation. A moving jaw and removable face grill continue to give this character so much of a unique identity. The included cloth gives new life to the tabard body and sets this figure apart from the rest in the collection. Sculpting wise, there's a ton of little scratches and dents all over the figure, giving him the appearance of being well traveled. There's always something interesting to look at on this figure. For the accessories, we get a great selection of weapons, shoulder armor, and an additional skull with an articulated jaw. The value for this figure is here. The paint was applied very well all over the figure, with tons of detail like dirt and scuffed and scratched armor. The bulky 1.0 body has had his articulation tightened up and he feels really solid to pose. Overall, Brother Mandibulus is one of my top figures for the advent of Decay line, and one of my favorite skeleton figures so far. I'd recommend him to anyone looking for an evil villain or just anyone who wants a great selection of accessories. Alright guys, that'll do it for this review. More reviews are coming up soon.